Welcome to the report from Iron Mountain. We're going to praise Her Majesty here on today's show and examine uh, the Australian election and the recent European elections. Keep India British, I say. What, what? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the two big uh, elections that have been happening across the Western world in the last, uh, say, few weeks. The first was the uh, big Australian election where the Labor Party was um, predicted by just about every news source there was to uh, trounce the local uh, Conservative Party, the local Liberal Party. And uh, we very much had a situation like Brexit and Donald Trump down under, which, of course, means nothing but sweet, sweet pain for the new left. Um, so what happened was uh, we had a three-week election. Again, um, I thought that ScoMo, Scott Morrison, who is the uh, local Liberal candidate, was putting uh, a very good campaign together. So I thought, well, it's going to be close because he was putting together a very good campaign. And uh, Bill Shorten, who was the uh, local Labor New Left leader, who essentially was just pushing globalist politics, global change, um, taxing the shit out of everybody, financial austerity, um, transferring all Australia's money to um, foreign bodies. Um, you know, I thought this was deeply unpopular. And I think, uh, even though obviously uh, the globalist cabal controls our media and also controls the ABC by installing new leftists there, um, recently Ida Buttrose was sent to the ABC, which is fantastic. So I think she's doing some good work. And I saw a story this morning where she's, big, she's admitted that the ABC is biased. So this is fantastic news. Anyway, um, so... Um, yes, they were pushing all this agenda. The ABC was completely in the hands of the great traders. And um, uh, yet, still, the Australian people um, could smell a rat. And when they smell a rat, they rejected it. And uh, they rejected Bill Shorten. They rejected Penny Wong, who is clearly a Chinese spy. I think I've said this before. Clearly a Chinese spy. And, um, you know, they voted... Uh, almost like, oh, well, that's definitely a majority, for the Labor Party, sorry, the Liberal Party, and they trounced the election in. Um, they took Queensland. I think uh, um, uh, the Labor Party now only holds, like, four seats in Queensland. They took most of New South Wales. Unfortunately, the state I live in, um, uh, Labor Party managed to hold on because, I don't know, people hit down here must be fucking stupid or something. Um, but most of the rest of Australia, the Liberal Party succeeded. Um, they achieved um, a historical uh, majority with, that no party has held for many years. I think ScoMo now has a true mandate. Uh, I, I think both parties, the Liberal and Labor Party, have learnt not to change leaders. So we're going to have Scott Morrison for the next three or four years until the next general election. I think this is, you know, really good news. Um, in relation to nationalist parties, um, obviously I was a supporter of Fraser Anning. I mean, I'm a supporter of all the major nationalists, Pauline Hanson, Fraser Anning and even Clive Palmer, which I think you could make a case for, um, because I, I believe in a, um, a diversity of ideas on the new right. And I think they both put together um, different kind of interesting ideas and they're all worth listening to. Um, but there was... Um, Clive Palmer didn't get any seats, um, but I do believe that the $80 million he spent really did help the, um, the Liberal Party because um, while they didn't vote for the Clive Palmer Party, they knew that the Liberal Party was at least closer to um, uh, the ideas of Clive Palmer and that, you know, to some extent, I think the Liberal Party would be listening to what some of what Clive Palmer was saying, even if they don't always act on it, in relation to, like, you know, the fact that we sold a, a military base up in uh, um, uh, northern Western Australia to the Chinese, where they can begin to essentially begin to take over Australia, which is obviously China's um, initial or eventual ambition to have this country for themselves and its vast um, land size and its vast mineral resources. Um, so anyway, um, there are many reasons why the Liberal Party won. Um, um, the two main ones I would say is um, Billery, which is Bill Shorten, was terrible. Um, you know, I mean, the Labor Party doesn't really have many good leaders or potential leaders. The one they've just elected now, Anthony Albanese, I always thought was probably the best because at least he came across like an average Australian. Bill Shorten came across as a kind of weird perverted robot or something or you know I don't know he just was unpopular there was just something about him uh, he was accused of rape of course we don't know the actual truth of that but the fact that it was never investigated is suspicious at least properly um, so um, you know it's just a very strange state of affairs people just got a bad vibe from Bill Shorten and ScoMo really almost invented the kind of cult of personality on the Liberal Party page he made it a lot about him um, which was unusual for a Liberal leader to do but I found um, you know I mean that was what Donald Trump did of course um, but ScoMo really came across as a lot nicer person than Donald Trump. I mean, he seemed like a really good kind of, like, good-hearted Christian dad um, who really cared about his family, was really in love with his wife, and he came across as the, one of the sweetest persons in Australian politics, um, I think, probably since Bob Hawke. 
who happened to die two days before the election. We should talk about that. Bob Hawke passed away, who um, I think was um, the greatest Labor leader of Australia. I, I did like him uh, in the 80s, and I think even historically looking back on him, I like Bob Hawke. Uh, when I was running my nightclubs up in Sydney, I, I met Bob Hawke, and um, uh, I was, like, hailing a cab just below King Cross, and Bob Hawke was hailing one right next to me. And a cab driver pulled up to me and picked me up, and I said, fucking Bob Hawke wants a cab. I said, come on, let's grab him and then take him wherever he wants, and then I'll pay the cab back from wherever Bob Hawke wants to go. So we grabbed Bob Hawke, and uh, then we just talked to him for like 15 minutes, you know, and obviously we're both big fans of him. Um, the cab driver was an immigrant, obviously I'm an Aussie, and uh, we were just going, you're a legend, and blah, 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 you know, and obviously he gets a lot of this, but he was a very nice guy, and, um, you know, you could tell he was a good-hearted person, and I think, you know, that, uh, that moment when Bob Hawke died, that Thursday evening before the Australian election, I did think that would give Labor the bump it needed, because I think it had suffered... Um, a terrible uh, campaign, but I thought Bob Hawke buying this is like uh, dying, and the media going into a, like a kind of forty-eight hour, um, what you call it, like reminiscing about you know the best part of the Labor Party. I thought that's got to give them the edge, you know. But Australia absolutely ignored it, and that is how terrible Bill Shorten was, and I think how good Scott Morrison was. Uh, I think some of the Nationalist parties. Um, I think uh, Pauline Hanson lost a seat or two, um, but she still has at least one person in the Senate. Uh, and um, Fraser Anning uh, didn't get re-elected. But, you know, I think basically everyone went centre-right. I think in a time of crisis, that's quite common. So um, I still think it was very healthy what happened. Um, the Liberal Party, um, you know, like, um, it was like a, almost a landslide um, for the Liberal Party, and um, it was like a phoenix-like rising of... of um, um, a kind of also, also a kind of new rightness began to appear within the Liberal Party itself, which is exactly where it's going to happen. We need to transform the Liberal Party to a lot more conservative ways, and obviously all the nationalist parties signal that. And as long as, and as long as the Liberal Party sees how popular they are, I mean, when they do their real um, polling, you know, Australian politics will move more and more that way. So, okay, that was part one, and then we'll talk now part two about the um, elections in Europe.